Hi, I'm Tom Jones. Join me. I'm going to do a marsh scene. This is sort of a low country scene. Uh, you, you see on the coastal scenes, maybe in, in the uh, southern part of the United States, southeast. And uh, I've got a little bit of waterway coming through. I've got a nice sky and some trees. And I'm working with a miniature. These are called artist trading cards. They're small, as you can see, in miniature. And these are a lot of fun to work with. Join me. I'm going to show you how to do one of these right now. I'm going to start with a sky. I'm going to have a little bit of a, uh, maybe a little cerulean blue. I'm going to mix that up in my palette. And um, we'll start working with the sky first. We'll keep the sky very simple. Just a, a nice little blue sky with a couple of little clouds. And then we'll go from there. We'll go ahead and get the sky in first. And the reason I want to do the sky first is simply because I'm going to have some tree area uh, up against the sky area. And I want to make sure that I don't uh, put that color on wet color. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the sky in first. As you can see, it's a very simple sky. I've got a little bit of cerulean blue. Let's go and darken up a couple of areas or a little bit of that area, maybe with a little cobalt blue. We'll try in a couple of areas having a little bit darker sky. Now I'm working with a number eight round brush. This is my signature brush. And uh, the reason I like it, it's got a nice uh, sort of a needle point, a very fine point on it. So I can do some great detail uh, for this particular little painting. And uh, these little paintings can be a lot of fun for you. So stay with me, see how simple this is to, to paint. All right, so a very simple sky. I got some clouds in there. Now, one of the things that I think can be important for you is to remember if I don't put shadows in this area of the cloud, it would look like I just had white construction paper cut out and pasted on here. And I don't want that to be the look. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to take some of that same sky color and we'll dilute it down a little bit and make it uh, a little bit more watery, almost a grayish uh, color now. And I'll come in and add just a little bit of shadow into the cloud area. Now the cloud area in this case is the white area you see. The sky behind it, as you can see, was cobalt blue. So I'm going to put in just a little bit of a shadow effect and this will give the cloud dimension or shape. So very simply just laying in some color. Now I don't want to put the tree area in quite yet for the simple reason that the sky area is a little wet yet. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit and I'm going to move into basically what was what is called the horizontal plane or the ground, the water, the grass area. So I want to go ahead and do the water area first because that's going to be lighter than the grass area. So what I have is some water coming in from this side all the way around. You see just a little narrow strip of water coming forward, going out this side, and then back over this way. There'll be some grass in front here, and then there'll be some marsh area back here in this area. So follow me now as I put in just a little bit of this water. I want a very light area of water. So I'm coming in and just putting in just a light coat and again, I'm working with a little of the cobalt blue, cerulean blue mixed together, almost a grayish color. So just laying in this color for water. Now we'll put more detail in the water a little later. I'm not painting the entire area blue. It's just some areas where there's some shadow of blue along where the grass area is. We're going to leave part of that area of, of water white. The reason for that is that you have a lot of white or silver in the water when you have that kind of uh, uh, day where the blue sky uh, is, is up there. So you're going to have a little bit of this area white. Now, there'll be more detail in here, more shadow and shading going on in the water area, but that's all I'm going to do in that area at this point. Now I'm going to be very careful and put in a little bit of the marsh area, meaning the grass area here. So for this, I'm going to come over and grab um, a little bit of my light green. Now these marshes, are very, very beautiful if you've taken the time to look at them. And you, again, you'll see them in the southeast. But they have various beautiful colors throughout the year, everything from ochre to bright light greens to dark greens. So I'm going to come in and put in just a little bit of light green in the foreground grasses here. So I'm putting in just a little bit of green. And then I'm going to come in and take maybe a little yellow ochre, and that's this gold ochre color you see here, this yellow ochre, sort of almost like a raw sienna color. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in just a little bit of the yellow ochre in that area as well. Now, not a lot, but just a little, maybe at the beginning or the front of this grass area. 
And the reason for that, you'll see in a moment, I want a little variety going on in the grass area. So we'll have a little bit of the ochre. So some of it's going to be nice and green, and I'll have a darker green in here as well. But we're just laying in color. We're doing basically what we call an underpainting. We're blocking in the entire painting first, and then we're going to come back, and then we'll put some finishing touches on. Now watch what I do here. Just adding a little bit of green and a little bit of ochre also as well. Now I'm not mixing the colors together, you know, uh, in a pot. I'm, I'm putting them next to each other. So when I say I'm putting a little light green in, a little yellow ochre, they're not on top of each other. Okay. So now you can start to see how the grass is developing here. Now this area of the, of the sky back here might be just a little wet yet, but I think I'm safe. I think it's far enough back. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take, I'm going to take my area of, of trees that are right back in this area. There's some distant trees. I'm going to paint those sort of a bluish, bluish green color. And all I did was mix a little cobalt blue and a little bit of hooker green together, and I got that color. So that's just back in the distant trees on the, on the horizon back there in the distance. I don't want to get too dark because it's quite a ways back, so your colors would be more muted that far back in the scene. Now I also want to be very careful not to cover up where the water comes in. There's an area of water coming in from the side around this way, back out this way, and then out this way as well. So I've got that area in. Now there's another area of trees that are closer than the distant trees. Those would be a darker value. And I'm going to pick up some of my uh, light green. I'll mix some of that in as well. But what I want to do is I'm going to have those somewhat darker. So I'll pick up some hooker green and I'll add some ultramarine blue to that. Let me mix up some fresh color. Fresh blue, fresh green. Get it a little bit darker and we'll come in and we'll add just a little bit of that color and get these closer trees in the scene and get that just a little, just a, a little bit darker, a wee bit darker. And again, we're just doing the what I call the underpainting. We're putting in the first layer of colors. Now this area of trees should be darker than the distant area of trees because as you come closer in the scene, these areas would appear to be darker. In the distance, they would appear to be lighter. All right, so let's continue on. Just a little more of the dark. And I'm going to throw in just a little bit of a touch of some yellow just for excitement there in that same area. Come back in, add a little bit more dark. And this just about completes that area of tree. Sort of a forested area. You're not actually seeing individual trees. You're seeing a forested area of trees. So now we have closer trees here, distant trees there. And now we'll start working on the grass area should be fairly dry. So I can come in now and start adding a little bit of color in the area of the grasses as well. Let's pick up a little yellow. I'll make a decision here in a minute. Maybe a little light green. We'll see how that looks. We want to get this area a little brighter. So let's have some of this nice bright green. For the grass. And then let's get a little stronger on maybe a little yellow ochre in here. We'll put a little bit of that yellow ochre closer. Because you're going to have some of the reeds in this grass or some of the grass there that will be of a different color. They're not all going to be the same color. We'll try the same idea on the left-hand side over here. I'll put in a little ochre here, and then we'll add some green as well. Coming back in, I've got a little spot of ochre where I don't want it, so let me just take a tissue. In this case, I'm using just a, a tissue, and I'll pick up a little spot that I had right there I don't want. Now let's go back to this nice bright light green, and we'll add a little bit of that color in there to give it more excitement. And again, we're not done. We're going to come in and put in some even more significant dark in a couple of areas. We got this grass area here. Let's not forget about that. So we've got this area of grass as well. And again, we'll go back and put in a little yellow ochre just in a couple of areas for a little variety. That way your grass looks more realistic. If it's all one color, 
or and or one value, tonal value, it doesn't look quite as realistic as it should. So we want to make sure, just like in the reality of a landscape, you have a variety of colors and shapes and so forth, we want that also to show in the painting itself. So that's what we're doing. All right, now it's starting to take shape as a little painting, isn't it? Let me do one thing. I want to go ahead and take just one moment. I want to go ahead and dry this, and then I'm going to add just a couple of little darks and a couple areas that will really make the painting pop. So let me go ahead and take a moment and dry that now. All right, now it's completely dry. Let me take a moment. I want to add a few darks in here just to make this pop a little bit more. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up to the area of the sky, and I'm going to put another little layer in the shadow area. Not a lot, but just a little bit. I'm not going to cover up what I already did. I'm just going to add a little bit more darks in a couple areas to give it just a little more significance in the cloud area. That's about it. That's all it really needs. Let's do one other thing. Let's take maybe the shadow side, assume there's a shadow side, and let's darken just a little bit on the shadow side of the cloud. There we go. To give it just a little bit more dimension. So one side of that cloud will get a little darker. There. And now the cloud has more definition, meaning depth. So that's what we're looking for. Now, let's take a look at this little area of distant trees that are back along here. And what I want to do is I want to come in and put just a little bit of dark. I want to put just a little bit of dark at the edge where that tree line is back there just to identify that edge a little bit more so you can see that. Then I'll come into the area of the marsh, which is closer to me, and we'll put in just a little bit darker. Let me mix up a little bit of my ultramarine blue for this, and maybe a little bit of my burnt sienna, those two colors get it a little darker, and we'll come in and just add a couple of darks just to the edge of where the marsh is and see how that comes alive now. Just a couple of areas, so now we can see the edge of that. Let's go toward the back here and just identify where the edge is on the marsh toward the back. In other words, in here there would be a little shadow area at the edge of the marsh, and along this edge there would be a little bit more of a shadow area. So back in this area, back in this area, there'd be a little more shadow area. Now we're going to put a little more of the dark in the grass area up front to give that a little bit more identification. And now we'll come in and we'll take some of our cobalt blue and we'll add just a little bit more shadow in the area next to the marsh. So watch what I do here. I'm going to come in and just put a, just a small amount. It doesn't need a lot, so let me make sure I don't get too much of a concentration of color. Just a little bit. So let's come in and put a little darker because right next to the edge of that marsh it would have a little shadow effect in there. So we're going to add that in right now. Okay, Right up close to the edge. We'll do the same thing in this area here, just a little darker at the base of where that marsh is. You just lift a little of that color with a tissue, and that's all it takes, just that little bit. Okay. Now, as you can see, it only took a few minutes to create this little miniature painting, but these are a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun with this idea. Let me do one thing. Let me go ahead again and place a mat on this painting, you can see exactly how it looks. There. See how easy it is to create a beautiful painting? I'm Tom Jones. Check out my website at tomjonesartist.com and check out my full-length videos. I do a lot of videos that take these paintings into even more detail. Thank you for joining me.